Good morning from California. This is Amy Gardner talking to you about judge training for the 2016 season. And some of you I know have been experienced at judging, so I hope you get some new information or, you know, you have stuff to think about from this that will help you better judge. And some of you, maybe most of you are actually new registered judges. So we're really excited to have you guys. I'm really happy to have you here today to talk about the judging process so that I can help support you guys as you prepare and you give feedback to teams of young women around the world. They've been working really hard to identify problems in their communities and develop apps to help solve for them and also create business plans to help bring their ideas to fruition. They've done an incredible amount of work. They just submitted all their deliverables yesterday. Um, it was exciting, it was thrilling, it was kind of nutty. <laughs> But most of our team has actually submitted, and we're really proud of them. So now that they've done this incredible amount of work and they've submitted everything, it's time for you guys to come in and play your role to help give them some feedback. So we're thankful for your participation. I am Amy Gardner. I'm the Director of Curriculum and Technovation. And I wanted to give you an overview of what we'll be chatting about today. Um, we're going to cover a few things. So since many of you are new to judging, I thought I'd give you guys a nice overview of what Technovation is. And then talk a little bit about the structure of the competition, because there's semifinals, quarterfinals before that, and then the finals in July. And I wanted you all to just be aware of when the dates were so that you would know when to come in and judge. And then we're going to talk about how you can navigate the platform in case you still have some questions. Uh, we're also going to talk about what the expectations are on our end for the teams, what they've been submitting so that you know what a complete submission would look like to help inform you when you do your judging. Uh, we'll talk about what we expect from you guys as judges and what the realistic timelines are. And we'll talk about the rubric a little bit. Um, the rubric is pretty extensive and it involves objective and subjective scoring. So we'll get into that. So if you have questions about that, um, I'd ask you to just hold on to those until we get to that point in the presentation. And then, just so you have a baseline, if you've never done a judging gig here before, we're going to have a look at a demo and a pitch video from a team that made it to the finals last year. And we're going to talk about how we would score these or what that would look like, just so you actually do have that baseline. All right, um, so I've heard that the sound is breaking up a bit. Um, let me know if that continues to be a problem, and I'll see what I can do. And then finally, um, we'll talk about what kind of feedback we're looking for you guys to give to the team. Um, how can you guys let them know gently that some things might have been missing, but to also give constructive feedback about that. So here we go. I'm going to start by showing you guys a clip by Leslie Chilcott. She's a documentarian who took an interest in the Technovation program. And she actually recorded a lot of the, the struggles and the high points that the teams were going through in the 2015 season last year. And she made a full-length documentary, which is available on Netflix to stream. So it could be a fun experience for you guys if you're judging with a group of coworkers or some friends to stream this movie beforehand to get inspiration and to um, be able to empathize with what the teens have been going through as they work on these apps. And also then, you know, make a party out of it. Maybe order pizza, um, get together and sit in and judge for a couple hours together as a group. So here is the clip and it's a basic overview of what the program is about. Technovation Challenge is a mobile app competition for girls in middle school and high school, and the prompt is to solve an issue in your community by building a mobile app. You take something that you thought you couldn't do, and you realize, like, I just had to work at it, I have this support system, and I can do it, and I can really affect the change in my environment. The initial chunk is really about brainstorming, paper prototyping, figuring out how big of a problem this is, doing the market research, seeing who your competitors are, 
and then sort of narrowing down all the features that you want in this amazing solution to something that you can actually build and prototype. They get the basics of App Inventor to kind of get them rolling on the coding and so they, they can learn the platform and how they would actually build a prototype to begin with. Using a block-based language, it's very visual, it's very friendly, it says, they call it low level, so it's easy and accessible for anyone to jump over, and very high ceiling, so you can code anything. We have some students that submit iOS apps or some students who actually program in Java for their Android apps. And all of this is based on going out into the community and getting feedback from people and seeing if what you're identifying is actually coinciding with what the rest of the community thinks. Towards the end, you have a very nice business plan, you have a working prototype, and then you have to do a pitch and videotape it, and then you submit all of these for judging. First, is going to change the world. Second, does the app work? Uh, that's the technical side of it. And third, will it make money? I would say every girl in middle school and junior high should know how to solve a problem using technology. Technovation Now is the world's largest technology entrepreneurship program for girls. There's no other global program that's um, bringing girls into technology and entrepreneurship in a cohesive way as we are. Okay, so for some of you who might have had trouble seeing that clip, if you go to the codegirlmovie.com website, you can probably see that clip there. It's part of the extra resources for the movie. I'm going to put that in the chat room too, just so you can see it. It's a nice overview of the program. Um, for those who couldn't see it, uh, I'll just summarize quickly what the overview of the program is. So Technovation is a three-month basic program and the, the curriculum is free for students around the world who want to identify a problem in their communities and help solve that by creating an app. We usually encourage newcomers to the program to use App Inventor because it has a low wall and a high ceiling. So students are able to kind of click and drag blocks of code to help create their apps. And then they also create a business plan to accompany all this so that the intention is to launch their app eventually and publish it and get their communities using it. So in this three month period, they're doing all of these things, which is pretty intense. And it's very interesting because we see a lot of students coming up with problems that are very serious and have very strong social implications for the community. And we're here to help them realize their dream of solving this problem by using technology. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the structure of the program. Um, the deadline for teams to upload their sessions was yesterday. And there was a big frenzy. And most of the teams got their app so, um, deliverables in on time, which is fantastic. We had over a thousand teams, and so you can imagine that it was quite busy for us at Technovation. <laughs> um, so basically, um, if you take a look at the structure, and you can also download it from the materials panel, so you can see a little bit better, um, you'll see that the quarterfinals start actually today um, because everyone has submitted their, their things. And this part goes from the semi, the quarterfinals goes from today, April 22nd to May 3rd. Um, you have until about 3 p.m. today to sign up as a judge, and that's 3 p.m. Pacific time in California. So if you haven't done that, I would recommend that you do so as soon as possible after this webinar, because we, we're probably still looking for a few more judges, and, you know, the more the merrier. So... You'll have details on that in a few moments as I come to that in the presentation. Um, so you'll see that there's two kind of events between April 22nd through May 3rd. These include virtual judging as well as official, official regional pitch events. Let's talk about the official regional pitch events first. These events include in-person pitching by teams and are typically organized by our regional ambassadors. You'll also be able to see a list of where live events are happening should you want to go as um, an audience member or maybe even as a judge, although that's probably been worked out already. But if you go to the technovationchallenge.org slash events page, you can see where things are happening and you can there's contact information for people at those events. 
You'll also know if there's a live event near you when you register as a judge. All the live regional pitch events will be happening between today and May 3rd. If you do happen to be a judge for a live event, you'll still need to register online, and scores from that event will also still need to be submitted online. More on that later. There's also a virtual judging happening during this, this window of April 22nd to May 3rd, and I'm presuming that most of you here today will be taking part as a virtual judge. App submissions will be grouped according to region and division, and you'll be judging apps that are not in your region. This is to ensure that you don't end up judging uh, a team you might have worked with as a coach or mentor, and to ensure fairness. So we'd like you to score at least five apps during this time, during the quarterfinals, and there will be three people judging each app. Um, I would say um, if you're having a uh, trouble reading the text on the slide to download this this resource, which is called the timeline from the materials pane. And you can look at it later for sure. So there's also, okay, so after we get through this, this quarter final period between April 22nd and May 3rd, um, the scores will be tabulated and the results will be shared. Then the semifinal judging round begins on May 5th and goes through May 12th until 5 p.m. Pacific time. You can also judge for this round, and we would love for you to do that. And during that round of things for the semifinals, we'd love for you to judge two apps. Results from the semifinal round are expected around the third week of May, and the same judging rubric is used for both rounds because it's basically the same process. Finally, during the week of July 11th, six high school teams and four middle school teams will advance to the finals and travel to San Francisco and Silicon Valley in California. For the World Pitch Summit. This event includes pitches from these teams, workshops, and an expo for people to come to. Anyone can come to the World Pitch Summit, and we'd like for you to know that you're invited, so keep your eyes peeled for emails coming from us. And how great would it be to see a team that you might have judged? Um, any of these teams could be there who work so hard, and they have such great ideas, so keep that in mind, please. <laughs> To get started with judging, you'll need to be registered by later today, as I mentioned, and logged into the judging platform between April 22nd and May 3rd for the quarterfinals. So let's talk more about how to do that and how you will actually navigate the platform. Note that you can download detailed registration instructions on the materials panel. And for those who are watching after this live webinar, you can um, download the materials from the Technovation uh, challenge.org website. Um, it's easy to register as a judge. All you need to do is complete these steps. So step one, if you're already a coach or mentor, log into your account that you already have at my.technovationchallenge.org and just log in with the same credentials as your mentor or coach profile. If you're a total newcomer and you've never been a coach or judge for Technovation, you'll need to create an account at mytechnovationchallenge.org. Then click on the judge button to the right down there where my mouse is hovering right now. If you're currently registered as a mentor or a coach, um, your step two is once you log in at my.technovationchallenge.org, there will be a sign up as judge message on your dashboard. Select the box next to I want to be a judge down where the arrow is, and then click update judging status on the dashboard. If you're new to Technovation, your step two will be to select virtual judging under the Your Judging Event page. Step three is to sign the volunteer release electronically. If you're already a coach or a mentor, you've already done this. Step four for everyone is to sign up for a judging event. Most of you will be judging virtually, as I mentioned. If you're currently a coach or mentor and are participating as a virtual judge, you'll be selecting virtual judging. If there's a live event near you, you should be able to select it in the drop-down menu. You can also go to the, my, the technovationchallenge.org slash events page again to see whether there's any events near you. You have until this afternoon, April 22nd, until about 3 p.m. to select or change your judging event. 
Note that some judges who are clicking the dropdown for Team Region, for some reason, were not able to choose their event. So our workaround right now has been to ask people to leave the drop-down menu alone, and you should be able to see your events. Uh, I have a message from Jean to go back to slide seven. Uh, make sure they only click team region if they were a mentor. Thanks, Jean. <laughs> yes. Okay, um, back to slide 10. Note that um, if you're judging for two separate events for any reason, like you're judging a middle school thing or a high school thing, you'll need two accounts to do this. You can create a second account with your regular email. Um, as you can see, I put an example down there, amy at technovationchallenge.org. And then you'll create a second account with your same email, but using a plus sign. So the example for that is amy plus judge at technovationchallenge.org. I don't think a lot of you will be in this position, but if you are and you have any questions, feel free to email info at technovationchallenge.org. As a reminder, for both virtual and regional pitch judging, the teams will have submitted all of their deliverables onto the online platform by April 21st, which was yesterday. Regional pitch participants will also pitch their app live in front of judges and answer the judges' questions. For virtual judging, teams will have uploaded their deliverables onto the platform, and you'll be able to see everything that they submitted and provide scores and feedback on the platform as well. We'll choose a proportional number of semifinalists, depending on how many teams have submitted in the team's virtual judging region. Finally, step five, um, log back in and see today <laughs> whether you are able to actually judge now. So at some point today, you should be able to see what you're seeing on the screen here. Judge now button will appear at the bottom of your dashboard. Then you click on it and it will take you to a bunch of apps that we would like you to judge. So let's talk a little bit about what the expectations are for both the teams and their submission, and for you guys, the judges. Knowing more about what's expected from teams and their submissions will help inform your judging scores and feedback. So you know, a com complete submission would include app source code, and screenshots of the app, a four, a four or under minute pitch video, uh, a two or under two minute uh, app demo video, a business plan with various components, which we'll talk about when we get to the rubric, and a 100 word app description. We'll talk about this more in a second. Three things that the teams absolutely must submit in order to have their app judge are the business plan, the pitch video, and the source code. So if you receive submissions that have only these three things, that's okay, but you would need to know, um, but you need to do your best to judge the app because those who have had all the deliverables sent in will probably have painted a more full picture of their app. Um, so we're asking you to just do the best you can given what you have. We're asking that each of you judge at least five apps in this quarter final phase and uh, this happens between now and May 3rd, and for you to judge at least two apps in the semi-final round between May 5th and 12th. If you want to, you can judge more than five, though. No one will hold that against you. And you might want to actually judge more than five. And I would say that the time commitment would be between 60, I mean 30 to 60 minutes per app, and depending on how you want to approach it. If you want to be really thorough, if you want to download it, uh, if you want to take the time, uh, really sit with it. 60 minutes is, you know, pretty much the range. I see someone is taking notes frantically, wondering if we can get a copy of these slides. Yes, you can actually download the presentation from the materials panel. And also, this is going to be recorded. It is right now. So you will be able to access this. So I, I think that if it's possible, you should just be able to sit and listen and then revisit this later so you don't have to take notes the whole time. I realize it's a lot of information, so I really applaud you for sitting through this and and paying attention. Okay, if you can't see the Judge Now button, that means that uh, the platform is not yet ready to give you apps to judge, but I would check in later today or tomorrow. 
Okay, so um, in addition to scoring the rubric, we're, we're also asking if you can take some time, and this is like the 60 minute side of things, to give some constructive and encouraging feedback for each submission. If you watch Code Girl, you'll see that it's a pretty emotional ride for a lot of teams to be working so hard to get these submissions in. So if you could give them not just a numerical score, which I'll talk about, um, and some actual written written feedback, that would be so wonderful for them and would mean a lot. So um, <clears throat> if you're judging virtually, you'll see that the deliverables are in the center. This is once you click on the Judge Now button, once it's available to do so. Um, you'll see that the deliverables for the app that you're judging are in the center of the screen, and the scoring is to the right. The rubric is built into this, and you can choose like multiple choice your scores, your discrete scores for different areas that are being looked at objectively, such as ideation, technical, entrepreneurial, and then also you can add your subjective score. We'll get into these areas soon. Okay, yes, Jean mentions that the Judge Now button will not be able to be accessed until later tonight. So you guys have a little bit of time <clears throat> before you need to do that. So in order to save your scores, you need to enter all of the numerical scores for that team. That's to prevent us from having partially judged teams. You can go back to review your scores afterwards, and we recommend that you do so because you're judging them in relation to the other ones that you've been judging. So um, one thing that I might suggest doing is, you know, putting in a score each time you look at one, but then, you know, sitting back a little bit, um, and then revisiting them all again to make sure that you think you still want to deliver that score. So for in-person events, all the teams from that specific region event will appear for the judge. Although you can't explicitly ask for the number of teams to judge, you can pick the ones you would like to judge or judge all the teams for that event. You'll need to go to your dashboard screen again to select a new app to judge. Some people have asked whether they can just judge Android apps or iOS for Apple. The short answer to that is if you feel that strongly about it, you can um, cycle through all the apps that are available to you to judge and pick the ones you want. But I would actually really like for you to be open-minded and score any app. Um, chances are that most of the teams will have used App Inventor, which would be for Androids, but you don't have to have an Android to do that. Um, if the app was created with App Inventor, the team should have submitted their .aia file or even maybe a .apk file. Even if you're not a coder, you can get a good idea of how well the students did the coding. Anyone with or without an Android device can import the code into App Inventor online and at least look at it. You can also use the emulator if you want to try that. The App Inventor emulator is a good way to see at least the navigation. So you can test with the AIA file by clicking connect an AI companion or the emulator. So instructions on how to do this further are included in your materials section and I downloaded those from the MIT App Inventor site. So I would suggest that you take a look at that if that's something you'd like to do. So you don't need to rely just on the demo video, you can do this. But um, teams that have submitted a complete application have also included a demo video and you should really be able to see with that demo, how it functions, what the navigation is like, stuff like that. So again, just a reminder that setup for Android and the emulator, if you don't have an Android, are included in the materials section. <laughs> Jean, Jean suggests to everyone, you have until 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time today to sign up as a judge. Do so as soon as you can so you don't forget. Yes, please. <laughs> So um, I also wanted to, we've been getting questions about whether you need to be a technical expert to judge the app navigation and all of that and the usability. The answer to that is no, you don't have to be. Uh, if you look at the rubric, which we will in just a bit, you'll see that there are, there's no direct scoring for that. It's mostly about nav navigation and user interface and stuff like that. Also. I wanted to remind you that each app is going to be judged by three people. So within that three, we expect there to be enough variety and expertise. 
You don't necessarily have to be a technical expert, so don't let that put you off. Also, if the team has published their app to the Google Play Store or Amazon or Apple App Stores, you can download it and test it that way. <laughs> so just a brief overview of the judging rubric. There's different components. Um, I recommend that you download the rubric, which is in the materials section, because we're going to be looking at a case study video in just about five minutes. And if you have that in front of you, and you take notes, it might be really useful and be a baseline for you. So you'll see with this overview that a team can receive up to seven points total for their score. There's three components of the objective score, and they include ideation, technical, and entrepreneurial aspects. Then there's the subjective score. So were you able to weigh in and, you know, how persuasive was this team in their pitch? Um, do you think that this app fits a need? Would it be used? Does it have potential for growth? Things like that. There's also bonus points if the app was published to any of the Google, the Google app, Amazon or Apple app or Play Stores. So let's take a deeper dive into which each section entails. I've cut and pasted the different areas of the paper version of the rubric for us to talk about. And the first one is ideation. I printed this out too, and I recommend that you do it. I'm someone who likes to work with hard copies of things and take written notes, and it helps me kind of consider what I've been thinking and writing. So let's zoom in on the ideation score. The questions here are, do the team identify a problem in the community that has social implications? Does the app address the problem that was identified? So in this case, a zero score would be no, and a five score would be yes, compelling. <laughs> um, you're not able to, judge, to give a two or a four, unfortunately, this time around, but there's enough variety here that you can actually give a kind of weighted. So one would be the problem identified is more of a nuisance, but does not have larger social implications. Three would be the problem seems to be real, but could use a little more detail. And does the app address the problem? So we've seen before that sometimes the solution to the problem doesn't necessarily match the problem that they wrote in the beginning. This is because they may have worked on their app more and they didn't kind of bring back their description of the app or the problem. So you're going to want to see that, you know, the problem and the solution really match each other here. So if you give a one here, it means the app addresses a tangential problem. A three would be the app addresses some parts of the problem. And five would be complete address of the problem. Um, so Marcel and Lily, I think your questions are good, but I'm going to ask you to email me after them because it's getting a little bit ahead. And I think that I need to move forward with the description of the ideation and all the other aspects of the rubric. So sorry about that, but please do email me. Um, I'm going to type my email in here. It's amy at technovationchallenge.org. All right, so moving on, um, the technical score, the questions there are, is the app that was submitted fully functional? Does the prototype go beyond static information? Does the prototype match the feature list in the product description? And is the user interface easy to navigate? So this is the biggest weighted one. And basically, is the app fully functional? Uh, zero would be no. Five would be, yeah, no bugs that I could see. Three would be mostly except for a few minor issues, but I still get the general idea. Does the app go beyond static information? Meaning, does it touch upon another app or does it get information from other sources? Is it something that goes beyond the user's phone, really, or information? And a five would be yes, it uses multiple resources and does so effectively. Um, a zero would be information is stored directly in the app. So you see the range there. Um, <laughs> does the prototype match the feature list defined in the product description? 
Uh, five would be yes. Three would be more than half of the features are in the prototype. There is a reasonable explanation for the missing features. One would be less than half the features listed in the prototype are minimal, and explanation for features are missing is not really there. And then finally, user interface. Um, a no would be zero. A five would be a quick skim of the defined problem and product description was enough to understand how to use the app. Uh, one would be all the functionalities there, but I had to watch a demo video and read the product description to understand. A three would be the app was obvious after thoroughly reading the product description. So here we're looking for their powers of written persuasion. Are they giving you a description that is really easy to understand? And also in, con in conjunction with how does the demo video look? Um, I would say if you don't have the demo video and you can't really access the app, then you're really relying on this written information. So. Samia asks, how to distinguish if data is stored locally in the app or retrieved from a backend system? And Leslie asks, is information from the user considered static information? I think what we're going for here is, um, is did the student create a, use TinyDB to create a database to make a list? Um, that would be something that does not go beyond the confines of their phone. Um, they're making a list of things that they they will use on their phone and access again. But we're looking for, you know, can the app access other sources? Can it go to other databases and interact with them to make it a very robust kind of informational and user experience? Andrea asks, what does it mean by prototype? The app itself? Yes. So. What we're asking students to create is a prototype. Um, last year, some of the teams who made it to the finals, at least one of them had one that looked extremely polished and that was beautiful. I would say that that may have gone beyond a prototype. We're asking students to create a prototype that might not necessarily be fancy, but has um, minimal viable product. So it's solving for a certain thing, and it has a few features that help you get to some kind of answer to that problem. It doesn't have to have like a million bells and whistles, but it has to serve the purpose. Example of a five score. <laughs> Uses tiny DB and GPS and pops user to PayPal for checkout. Yeah, that would be an example. <laughs> um, Sean Mugam asked, do we get the instructions on how to install the app in the virtual event? I have. Um, in the material section, I've included information from MIT on how to download an app, Inventor app, using an AIA or an APK file. Okay, so moving onwards to the entrepreneurial score, and you guys can feel free to email me after this with any more questions. Again, my email is amy at technovationchallenge.org, and it's spelled A-I-M-E-E. -E. I'll type it in the chat again. Um, I can't, Teresa asks, can I give you a demo demo of uploading the code into App Inventor? I can't do that today, but if there is significant interest in the upcoming weeks um, before the deadline to judge these apps, I can consider doing that or have our App Inventor fellows actually do that. Ah, okay. Cool. <laughs> and also Lily is giving instructions in the chat room. So that's really great. All right, so moving on to the entrepreneurial score. Um, this is a lot about the business plan. So if you take a look at that, the big questions here are around product description, potential market size, competitive analysis, potential revenue, and branding and promotion. So the business plans you're seeing should have something about all of these areas. Um, I'm just gonna go through the numbers quick. <laughs> So product description, a zero would be no, it doesn't exist. And three would be describes app and the value it adds. So 
Two would be describes the app, but no sense of the overall value, meaning, you know, does this contribute to something that doesn't already exist? Um, how does this app make someone's life easier if they're trying to solve a problem? One would be a short and vague description. Potential market size is groups of people. One would be groups of people are mentioned, but no estimates have been done. A three would be more along the lines of estimates have been done and groups are defined. Estimates are clearly explained. So we want to know that they've done some research and that they've, they've done the numbers on what the market size could be and what the potential is. Competitive analysis is really important. All too many times I've seen teams come up with an idea that they think is original. They haven't done a lot of research to make sure that they're not just reinventing a wheel. Um, yes, their idea is original to them, but no, um, there's a lot of competition. And it's I can't state enough how important it is for teams to do some research because they need to know how to do this in other, you know, for so many other reasons than technovation. So a, a score of one would be competitors are named, but explanations are kind of non-existent or really sparse. Um, a two would be competitors are named, explanations are provided, but it could have been more thorough. And three is analysis is exhaustive. So they've done the work. Um, someone asked, are all the teams from the U.S.? And the answer is no. <laughs> we have a lot, a lot of countries involved. Um, I think the number is in at least the 60 country range this year, but I think we also have a map on our website, so you should check that out. No, we have a lot of countries represented. Um, Robert asks, regarding the business plan, what if they envision a free app for social good but don't care about making money? That's a really good question. Um, there was a webinar recently with Ava Ho, who is a venture capitalist and on the board of Iridescent, the parent company of Technation, and we talked a lot about this. Um, our goal is that um, students make, you know, it's not just about money. I'll say that off the bat. If it's doing something for social good, that's excellent. Teams should realize, though, that they have to have some plan to make their work on this app doable and sustainable because people don't just work for free all the time. So they have to keep in mind um, that even if they offer their app for free, they need some kind of revenue stream so that they can pay themselves to keep doing this. So that's a really good point. All right, so back to the entrepreneurial score. Um, potential revenue. Calculations for a one score are suspect, but the explanations are not clear. Um, a three would be calculations and explanations are thorough and believable. And a two would be calculations exist, but basis of calculations could use a little bit more explanation. Dennis says, if they're looking for a not-for-profit model, they need to explain how they are being funded. Yeah. Um, this is definitely true. So, and it's we like to also let the students know that if they do publish their app to Google, Amazon, or or Apple, that if they do get revenue, um, usually up to I think thirty percent of that revenue is taken by the host. So they think what we want them to know is what the business model could be, and to know and expect that even if they do publish their app. There's revenue streams, there's implications, all of this. So it goes back to financial literacy, really. Okay, and finally, the last category is branding and promotion. So a zero is none. <laughs> a three is logo and promo plans are included, well explained and exhaustive. A one would be a logo or promo sources are included, but explanations are sparse or non-existent. Um, logo oh, three would be, I mean, sorry, two would be logo and limited promotional sources are included. Explanations are and per, uh, promotional plan could be more thorough. Okay. And finally, we get to the subjective score, which is pretty interesting. So the questions here are, was the pitch and other info compelling to you? Um, how did this strike you? You know, what was your gut feeling? Can you see this app being used by customers? Um, all of these things are really important along with feedback, and this is your chance to really give them your directed feedback. 
The overall impression score, just to remind you, is relative to the other apps you're reviewing. So definitely score this on your first pass, like I mentioned. But we recommend that you go back to review your scores for the prior apps in your pool. Um, Elizabeth, can you would you mind emailing me? Because we've gone a little bit beyond that topic. Or maybe someone in the chat can answer whether you're supposed to judge online or live. Great. Thank you. <laughs> So Jean was really nice, and she gave me an example to give you guys. So, for example, two teams could get scores of 10, because that's the maximum you can give in this category. Um, that would mean it's very thorough. Yes, the app has true growth potential. I'm sold. Um, if you're judging five teams, one could receive a score of two. So that means mostly it needs more work. I get their argument, but I'm not sold. So another team could get a score of five. Pretty good but not good enough related to the others. Um, compelling arguments were made and a small following might form. And a one, uh, one team could get a zero. So compared to the others, they just really didn't do a great job. Their argument was flawed and difficult to follow. But um, let's think about what we could say to them in terms of positive feedback. Um, we should let them know, of course, you know, that some, we thought some things could have been done a little bit better, but there's definite ways of talking about this that are constructive and positive too. So just touching back again to submitting scores, um, as I mentioned, the team that you're scoring or the app is in the center. All their deliverables should be clickable there. And then your score goes to the right in that column. So you'll see that you can both click on a number and then add a comment, which is optional. But we would love for you to guys to give them comments. All right, now that we've been through this, and thank you for being patient, um, let's circle back quick to the kind of feedback we're hoping that you will be able to provide. Um, it's okay to give a team a score of five. If there's any need for tiebreakers, another judge will be assigned to those tie-breaking kind of cases to help break tie. And another reminder that if an app is missing some deliverables, please just judge to the best of your ability. And know that the team's worked hard to even just get you those three resources. Um, <laughs> so for some of them, getting to this point has been extremely hard. So I'd like to ask for you guys to give some positive feedback with the critical. And I think it's worth noting that if a submission is incomplete, that you do mention it, but in a way that is encouraging. So I really found your pitch video compelling, but I was not able to judge so well um, how the app would work because there wasn't a demo video that I could watch. Um, I think it would have been helpful to see something like that so I could get the fuller picture of the functionalities of your apps. Um, so they have a baseline. Uh, let's take a look at the case study from last year. After we watched both their pitch and demo videos, we'll talk about what responses we might have given. And it would be great if you could whip out your judging rubric right now, um, or maybe just take some notes as you watch, or add your notes to the chat room so we can all see, about, see them and talk about them. So the first is a pitch video from Team Amica. They were in the finalist round last year. Um, the next one will be their demo video, and this is all under four minutes or so. Their business plan is in the material section. We won't have time to get to the business plan today, but I wanted you guys to have it so that you have this baseline, as I mentioned. All right, so let us watch their pitch video. Yeah, she did. I guess I should take it. She's probably expecting a text to confirm I took it anyway. Oh my god! They told me that they don't recommend me to drive and that I failed. I honestly thought I was okay to drive. Most people do, and that's how they end up getting hurt. Thank you for taking the test. Although I thought you knew better than to be under the influence, I'd much rather you get home safe than drive up in danger. Thanks for picking me up. No problem. I'm glad you're safe. Let's get home now. Every day in the United States, 28 people are killed as a result of drunk driving accidents. Amika's goal is to prevent people with impaired vision and slowed mental processing 
from driving under the influence of drugs or alcohol. The user will take a series of three cognitive tests, including balance and reaction time, to assess the user's ability to drive. Our technology will then suggest whether or not it's safe for the user to drive to their destination. If the user passes the test, we will warn them of the dangers of driving on the road and that they should only drive if they feel safe. If the user fails a test, our app will give the user a few different options. The user is able to notify their emergency contacts, call a local taxi service, or use other apps like Uber. A study by researchers in Australia showed that being awake for 18 hours produced an impairment equal to a blood alcohol concentration of 0.05 and 0.1 after 24 hours. 0.08 is considered legally drunk. According to data from Australia, England, Finland, and other European nations, all of whom have more consistent crash reporting procedures than the United States, drowsy driving represents 10 to 30 percent of all crashes. By having teens take our test, we are not in any way trying to take away the responsibility given to them. We just want them to have an option for both themselves and their parents, because drunk driving does not only happen often, but it also affects the lives of many people. Some who get in their car but never once drive impaired, yet suffer the consequences of others driving dangerously. Our app is just a recommendation, and although it will give fairly accurate results, it only suggests the user's driving capability given their situation. We believe our app has the potential to extend our app's focus onto adults, including the elderly. Although our app has a main focus on driving under the influence, the test is also compatible for testing people who are impaired through tiredness. We also plan on partnering with a car company for ignition interlock features. Using these features, parents will be able to ensure that teens take the test prior to starting their car. This type of technology would separate us from other apps being developed in this field. Our ultimate goal is to keep our peers safe and to prevent as many deaths as possible. We feel it is crucial to keep our friends and family out of the reach from the possible effect that impaired driving has on people. As a team, we sent out multiple surveys to the parents and received positive feedback. Approximately 90% said our app was one they would use for their children. Team Amika is hoping to make a change in our community. And with the Safeguard Driving app, we know there will be a significant difference. So, it seemed like they had done some research. <laughs> uh, let's now look at their demo videos so we can see how that complements the pitch video. Hello, we are Team Amika, and this video is a demonstration of our Safeguard Driving app prototype. Once the app is opened, the user will press the button that says Begin on the main welcome page. The user will be required to complete five consecutive tests. If a test is completed correctly, they earn one point. The maximum number of points that can be earned is five points. The next screen will take you to an emergency contact fill-in, where the user is asked to enter the phone number of their contact. The first test is the Stroop test. The color name will remain on the screen for one second. On the next screen, the driver will be asked to identify the color in which the text was displayed. Four choices will be given. The second test is the arrow test. The driver is asked to identify which arrow is different from the others. He or she has three seconds to make a choice. The third test is the balance test. The driver must move the ball to the line by tilting the screen and must then keep the ball on the black line for five seconds. The arrow test is repeated. The position of the arrow which points opposite to the others will be different than it was in test two. The Stroop test is also repeated. The color name and text font color will be different than they were in test one. If the driver earns either four or five total points, they pass the safeguard driving test. The car's ignition system can be started. If the driver earns three points or less, they fail the test. The car's ignition system cannot be started and options for getting home safely will be displayed on the screen. Okay, so I think this is a nice example because the two videos complement each other really, really well.
Um, someone asked during uh, the playback of these whether it's okay that the video is not four minutes long. So the pitch video guidelines we gave to the teams are they should be four, four minutes long. This is to give them something to aim for that we consider to be enough time to make a compelling pitch. And it's actually okay if it's less than four minutes. If you can get all your information across in that amount of time, so three minutes or more around that area, that's totally fine. Uh, we just didn't want people submitting 10 minute long videos. Um, we really think that you can get what you need to get into the pitch video in four minutes or less. Um, same thing goes for demo videos, except those are two minutes or less. Yeah, so I would say if they go a few seconds over four minutes for the pitch or a little bit over two minutes for the demo, it's okay as long as the information is relevant. It, so if it's redundant information and they went over time, that's not good and that should be mentioned in the comments gently. <laughs> So you could say something like, um, this was a really good demo, however, I did notice that you mentioned XYZ more than once or twice, and you know, your video could have kept to the two minute limit. So if a video is longer by a few seconds, that's fine. We say plus or minus a few seconds. So I wouldn't... You know, if it went three seconds or 10 seconds over, that's probably not huge cause to give them a big markdown or anything. But you can, you know, if you find it to be redundant in any way, then that's the place to write that kind of comment. Um, Isabel asks, how rigorous is the scoring? The app addresses some of the problem of teen driving, but not all the issues with teen driving. Can you clarify? That's good. Um, this is where I'd like us to talk about these videos. So. I'd say that in the apps that were the prototypes that we're asking students to make, they should be addressing a problem, and you should be checking to see whether the way they address that problem matches the problem they identified. So if they identified one area of teen drunk driving or driving while tired, um, and they got that solution for that, that's good. I think we need to keep in mind that the apps are creating within a three month time range um, probably won't be so um, extremely rich with features. I know that some of them will be, but um, within three months, we can expect them to create a very extensive sort of app. So that's why we're calling them prototypes too. Um, Jean mentions that a finalist last year had a five minute video. Their whole package was very compelling. So it appears that the long video did not have much of an impact. True. I mean, I think you need to take it in context. So if it was extremely compelling, you know, the way people having a background in academics and grading lots of things, um, we all have our own intrinsic ways of grading. And the rubric is there to help us be a little bit more objective. So you could mention, you know, your video was, was over the limit. It was five minutes long. Um, Here's what was good about it. Maybe, you know, you could have brought it down to four and a half minutes by reducing whichever information. Um, Alexander asks, how can I check if I already finished the judgment subscription? I wouldn't recall if I were done. Uh, are you talking about signing up to be a judge or judging an app? Signing up to be a judge? Um, why don't you email me after this? Because I'm not sure I have the direct answer to that right now. I think you probably would get a confirmation of next steps, but I'm not positive. So yes, please do email me after. So does anyone else have any feedback on these two videos? Um, do you think that they complemented each other pretty well? I also wanted to show you this one because um, interestingly enough, there were two finalist teams from Massachusetts last year. And this one, was an Android app, and I thought it did pretty well. Um, the other app that was submitted for Massachusetts was really flashy, and it looked like beautifully designed, and it was, you know, very fantastic. They neither of these teams won. Um, the team that won was Team Cheris, as someone had mentioned. They're from Nigeria. They had a very compelling pitch. Um, when those, that team walked into a room or you watched their videos, 
you are so engaged. Um, I would say the subjective scoring is so important because this is where, you know, the difference between an app that might exist around the world, you know, in different ways, you know, a lot of students have a very similar idea to something that might already exist, but they have their own spin on it and they have their own regional kind of considerations. But when an investor invests in a team or an idea, an entrepreneur also invests in the team. Did that team work together really well? Did they light up the room? Did they have a really compelling pitch? This is really important. Um, this is hard to learn. Um, some people have a way of persuading others that's very inherent. So this is where the subjective part really comes in. Yes, and I wanted to remind everyone that the judging, the numbers for numerical judging are discrete. So it's going to be, in most cases, a 0, 1, 3, or 5 for the objective scoring and a 0, 2, 5, and 10 for subjective scoring. And there's two bonus points for whether it was published in either the Google Play, the App Store, or the Amazon App Store. Okay, this is a good question from Alexandra. The question is, how do we know if our judgment on it is pretty good balance with others? I would say um, use, use Team Amica as a baseline right now, if you haven't judged before. And then pick your five apps excuse me, judge them, and then let sleep on it one night. You know, give yourself a little bit of wiggle room before the May 5th deadline and revisit your apps again. And think about whether you might change some of your scoring because you are judging your kind of pool of apps in relation to the ones that you're judging. So which team should we use as a baseline for the middle school level? I assume it will be different. Um, if you have, if you're currently a judge, I mean a coach or a mentor, you should be able to access team team submissions from prior years. Um, if that's true, I would recommend that you. What is the middle school team? Um, mm, I can't remember the name at the moment. Can you email me after this, Andrea, and I will give you a middle school team link to look at, or anyone interested. Um, I might be able to find you something really quick. Oh no, sorry, I can't. <laughs> I think Team AAT from middle school last year was one that I've been looking at. Yes, when I, how about this? After our webinar, I will email you guys with links to a middle school submission that you can use as a baseline. And for those who are following afterwards in the video recording, I will include that in the materials. Great. Yeah, I think it is good for you guys to all use the same baseline. And um, I think that the teams that made it to the finals last year were pretty good. And that way you will also know, you know, what kind of work will make it that far and what the expectations are. Uh, the baseline score, I'm not sure I have a response for that right now. <laughs> Jean says, I can say that the middle school team finalists had pretty compelling entries, some even better than the high school. Yeah, there was a middle school team that had, a, it was called Concussion Checker, I think, last year. And it was fantastic. I could not believe that a middle school team was just so advanced. It's incredible. Um, Orish says, how do we know what level we're judging middle or high school? Jean, would you have a response to that? Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Just waiting. If we can't get to your answer, Orish, then feel free to email me after. Oh, after you submit a score, I'll just wrap up quickly. Thank you for spending so much time with me. <laughs> We're almost done. Um, thanks for hanging in there. One note about scoring is you'll need to submit the entire score for each app submission so that it saves. 
So if you have an incomplete score and you go back and you want to start looking at another one, it won't save your info. So make sure you score the whole thing for each submission and then go back. Um, a new submission or submissions will become available for you each time you submit a complete score. So go back to your dashboard and select one there. You'll also have time to go back and edit your scores for this round until May 3rd at 5 p.m. Um, results will probably be announced pretty soon after that so that we can move on to our semi-final round. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to remind you. <laughs> and there's information on that. Um, we'd love to have your help to provide feedback from teams in the semi-finalist round too. So please check back in your dashboard and log in between May 6th and 12th to do that. And if you could, we'd love for you to do two, judge two apps at that point. So I just want to thank you all for joining me. Um, I know it was a lot of information, so I would definitely recommend consulting the recording again and the materials. And also using the coach and mentor Google groups so that you guys can also support each other. Um, if you have any questions after this, feel free to email info at technovationchallenge.org or you can email me personally, amy, A-I-M-E-E, -E, at technovationchallenge.org. And just realize that your personal feedback means the world to the teams that have been working so hard. So try to balance those moments of criticism with moments of kind of positive reinforcement. And thank you so much. That's all I have to say right now. Feel free to get back in touch. And I totally recommend watching Good Girl to get yourself psyched up before you do this. Okay, thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you.